For 11 straight years, the Bundesliga has been ruled by one club. Bayern Munich have taken domination to a whole new level, giving no other German side a sniff at the league title for over a decade. Well, that was until Harry Kane arrived. Oh, this one hurts. Now, eight points away from league leaders Bayer Leverkusen, behind in the Champions League round of 16 and out of the German Cup, Bayern could go trophyless come the end of the season. Is Harry Kane genuinely a curse? I know Eric Dyer probably is. And you guys never win anything, right? No. <laughs> or a Bayern just making problems for themselves. Someone said that Bayern have hit rock bottom, you know. Someone said it in it, not me. In it. I don't think, as someone outside of the Bundesliga, we can really take for granted just how much these lot dominate the league. The last time they didn't win the Bundesliga, Robert Lewandowski wasn't aging disgracefully. Jurgen Klopp hadn't been to a dental appointment in about 23 years, and Jamal Musiala was English. Good morning, guys. <laughs> but after some horrible displays in the league, culminating in a 3-0 battle from league leaders by Leverkusen to go eight points behind them and now a 3-2 defeat to relegation threatened Bochum alongside a Champions League defeat that now sees them one foot outside of the competition. Times are really looking tough and it culminated in this defeat against the side they beat 7-0 in the reverse fixture. Leon Goretzka described their season as a horror movie that just doesn't end. Critics are calling it German footballers face their biggest fears. Fucking hell, yo, what the fuck is that? Rated 18, mostly for Leroy Sane's violence. This is a movie you don't want to miss. <laughs> And it was a horror story for Joshua Kimmich watching on from the bench. The guy was practically in tears whilst his side were 3-1 down in this one. Tears from the bench when your team's losing is crazy. This guy's crying when he sees Bayern lose on FIFA. Meanwhile, Bochum's TikTok account weren't taking any prisoners after their 3-2 victory. <laughs> What is going on here? A 3-2 victory at home that came courtesy of goals from Takuma Asano, Kevin Schlotterbeck, and then Kevin Sturger from the penalty spot. Jamal Musiala had given up by in the lead, and Harry Kane did get a late consolation. But Deo Upamakano didn't help in this one, getting his second red card in two games after being dismissed in the Champions League versus Lazio. Upa Maguire. Another stupid set of double bookings here, I can't lie. I like Deo Upamakano actually as a ball-playing defender, but the guy is just a liability at times and makes some questionable decisions. Thomas Tuchel will be waiting outside of his house come the end of the game. And of course, the elephant in the room here, Harold Kane. As I mentioned, he did score in this one, but there were a couple of shocking misses here as well. Jamal Musiala playing him in behind one-on-one -on -one with a fantastic outside of the boot pass, only for Harold to scoop it over the bar instead of playing it literally square to Thomas Muller. <laughs> You just put it over by a mile. And then with the scoreline 3-2 into injury time, a simple unmarked header straight at the goalkeeper. His highlights were less than flattering. Come on, you fuck slug! <laughs> I can't believe it. The guy's actually cursed. Bayern could win every domestic trophy with one arm tied behind their back, and there's a chance they could go trophyless here. He was attempting to hide from away fans on his way out of the stadium after his poor performance, and will be left confused seeing Thomas Muller start raging again, given he hasn't completed his Duolingo course yet. Kingsley Coman's unbeaten record versus Harry Kane's bottle gene is a battle for the ages here. One of those records has got to go come the end of the season, and trust me, me, I would be back in that Tottenham DNA right now. What do we say at Tottenham? The poor guy, man, he'll still be searching for silverware in 15 years, having tried the Spanish Supercopper, Scottish Premier League, Olympics, and Sailing World Championships. None of them are giving him a trophy. Sailing World Championships. Harry Kane strikes me as the kind of guy that can't swim. I don't know why, and that's coming from a man who also can't swim. I am under the water. Please help me. Because at this point, he could enter a one-man tournament, and he still wouldn't end up leaving him with a win and the gold goes to the man giving out the gold medal what the fuck that doesn't even make meanwhile with Bayer Leverkusen disappearing off into the distance Granit Xhaka's letting Harold know where he stands upon attempting to actually win some silverware in his career don't fucking try any of that shit because yeah. I've been here before I'm a professional. And look, I respect that they're trying to make him seem at home with the appearance of Eric Dyer and, you know, starting to lose football matches. But Harry's going to know they're really starting to take the biscuit when Ryan Sessegnon walks through the training ground doors. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know who I feel sorry for here? Jamal Musiala. He doesn't deserve these shenanigans, this kind of foolishness. He's one of the most entertaining players to watch, like young players especially, in world football. I want the future of football to be him, Florian Verts, and Jude Bellingham, Phil Foden, and then other Ballon d'Or candidates like Connor Bradley. People are saying that Chelsea need to come back and save him after he played for them at youth level. Chelsea, saving him? Are you even thinking about the kid's mental health? That's like saving a poppy and then throwing it into a furnace. So with that, Thomas Tuchel ultimately is under a lot of pressure here. Winning the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich as their manager is pretty much a formality at this point. If you don't achieve that or if you don't look like you're going to achieve that, you are gone. That's just how Bayern Munich's board operates. That's how the league operates. And he was allegedly quoted as saying when he got back to the changing room, I think after the Lazio game, that he basically told the players that they weren't as good as he thought they were and that he was going to have to adapt to their level. Now look, listen, I hear it. He's not wrong. I mean, I have to wonder how good he actually thought Eric Dyer was in the first place. I'm sorry, Eric, man. I get at him way too much. He's just there for the taking. I'm sorry. I'm, I'll ease off him now. But the crucial thing about all of this is that Thomas Tuchel can't adapt to any level whatsoever. So they're both done anyway. And for those that might be saying, oh, like, this seems like a bit of an overreaction. They're eight points behind in the league, which is quite a large margin. But given the amount of games that are left, a, a comeback is still on the cards. But just to put this run into perspective, if they were to lose to Leipzig on the weekend, that would be four defeats in a row. They haven't done that in a time that actually mattered. They did it in 2015 when they'd already won the league. Since 1991. So that would be their worst bit of form for 23 years. And Leipzig are a good side. That could so easily happen. You get the feeling that if he does lose against Leipzig, then it is game over. Or if he does beat Leipzig, then his job's really only safe for a week until he then loses again. It makes you wonder why Bayern sacked Julian Nagelsmann in the first place, his predecessor. When Thomas Tuchel's now lost 10 games in 43, matching what Julian Nagelsmann lost, so 10, but in a span of 84 games, reaching the same amount of losses in almost half the time. So what actually is the problem, right? Because Thomas Tuchel, again, his job's clearly at risk, but why? Well, in the interview after the game, Thomas Tuchel was quoted as saying that he actually thought that Bayern should have won this game. If they were to play it five more times on any given day, they'd win all five times. And I don't disagree. It definitely had chances to win this one. It was a little bit of a smash and grab from Bochum, but that's always the... You don't get a relegation threatened side just out playing a side that's fighting for the league off the bar. But I do agree they were maybe a little bit unlucky not to score more than two. At the end of the day, they beat Bochum 7-0 in the reverse fixture. I think they've beaten Bochum 7-0 before that as well. They had good spells in this game. As I mentioned, Harry Kane wasted two golden opportunities. But the overall cohesiveness of this side is nowhere near good enough or what you would expect from Bayern. There's large spells of a game where they don't provide like any attacking threat whatsoever. I know I've been going like grilling Harry Kane about the whole trophy situation, but he has actually still been his usual great goal scorer himself like throughout the season so far. He was definitely wasteful against Bochum. He is part of the reason they didn't win that specific game. But what, the fastest player to reach 25 Bundesliga goals ever. He's broken records at Bayern Munich that Robert Lewandowski couldn't even break. In total, he's got 29 goals and eight assists in 30 games in all competitions. But especially recently, and again, I'm, I'm contradicting myself in terms of the Bochum game, but the service isn't quite there. Against Bayer Leverkusen, it was absolutely dominant. They were battered. If you go watch the highlights of that game after this video, yeah, you're not going to see, I don't think you see a single chance that Bayer Munich craft. It is just Leverkusen shot, Leverkusen shot, Leverkusen goal, Leverkusen shot. And again, the Bundesliga isn't like the Premier League in this sense, where Liverpool and Arsenal, even Man City, can genuinely be beaten on any given day by any team. You expect Man City to win the league more often than not, but if Liverpool draw to Luton, for example, or Man City, I don't know, if they lost to Everton, there's not like an inquest into the situation after it's just labelled as one of them Premier League things, but more often than not, they'll go and still win the league. Whatever. Bayern Munich are supposed to dominate pretty much every single team in the league, and that's what they're not doing. Even in the Bochum game, cool, on the balance of play, sure, they maybe deserve to win it, probably, but that's not what they should, they should be definitely winning it, like 7-0. So what next if they do go for a replacement for Thomas Tuchel? I mean, it depends what they really want to do. Do they see 
see this season as a write-off already, in which case you might as well just leave Thomas Tuchel till the end of the season and then you can bring in someone that's maybe available in the summer. If they did have a firm replacement, then Thomas Tuchel would already be gone in terms of like a, a permanent one, not a caretaker. And on the subject of caretakers, they've apparently reached out to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to see if he's interested in the role. Fucking hell, lads. These lot are done. I almost feel sorry for Oli when he arrives next season and they go out of the DFB Pokal because they still employ Harry Kane. At least Ole will have some level of fun watching Eric Maxim Chupamoting smack the ball into West Bavaria with a strike in the 90th minute. If Bayern's board were unhappy with Thomas Tuchel now, they better get ready to sit down and watch some war crimes with Solskjaer at the helm. It's not a terrible idea in terms of getting boosting, you know, squad morale, getting a bit of togetherness there. I think that's what Oli did a really good job at whilst he was at Manchester United. But I think if they were going to go down that approach and bring in a caretaker, then definitely just bring in Oli till the end of the season and then kind of like usher him towards the door. Obviously, there's talk of Xabi Alonso. Xabi Alonso would, I, in my eyes, would not want to go to Bayern Munich right now. You're on the verge of doing something actually spectacular with Bayer Leverkusen. And even if they weren't to win the league, his stock would still be really high. So you might as well just stay at Leverkusen and try and finish off the job with them. At the end of the season, might be a completely different situation. He might be willing to go if he does deliver Leverkusen a Bundesliga title. He used to play for Bayern Munich as well, so it kind of makes sense. I know Liverpool, we obviously want him too. Zinedine Zidane is also a name that's been flung about a little bit. Jose Mourinho's around. Energy, Mourinho. I'm not even sure if there's a way that Thomas Tuchel can rectify this apart from quite literally coming back, winning the Bundesliga and also the Champions League. And with the way that Bayern are playing at the moment, I'm sorry, I don't want to jinx it. I don't see that happening. Ah, oh, Leverkusen, I'm really sorry if I've ruined it. But what do you make of Bayern Munich at the moment and what is causing this mess? Is it Thomas Tuchel? Is it the Harry Kane curse? Or is it something more? Let me know down in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video, though, feel free to slap a like on it. And of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye. <laughs>